Hey GearHeads and welcome to Garage Talk. I'm Corey and this is the 2024 North Texas Auto Expo. Slight rebranding of the Dallas Auto Show. And the show is only running three days this weekend. I'm here for the media preview and I'm gonna show you everything I can on the show floor as quickly as I can. Stay tuned. All right, GearHeads, yes, I am at the North Texas Auto Expo, and we are gonna do a quick show floor tour while I'm here before the show even opens to the public. So you might notice just how empty it is behind me. In just a few hours, this place should be packed. Very excited to show you everything on the show floor here because there might just be some surprises, but let's just dive right into it. We're gonna start over here at Chevrolet and work our way across the entire show. There's a lot of fun stuff to see and a lot of useful things to see, starting with this right here. Uh, this is Chevy's new Trax. This is my vote for SUV of the year, uh, the unofficial GT Garage Talk SUV of the year, because this vehicle starts around 22,000 out the door, and you can option it up to right at 27,000. This is one of the two co, uh, co top trims uh, along here with this Active. So we've got RS and Active at the top of the spectrum. And we're just gonna go ahead and pull into this window sticker right here and see, okay, definitely the wrong uh, window sticker. So ignore all of that. <laughs> that is not a Chevy ZR2. Let's see if they've got the right one here on the Active. Nope, that is definitely not an uh, <laughs> Silverado chassis cab. So they are still getting things ready. They've got a few hours before the show actually starts. But yes, uh, these two trims start just under $28,000. And that is why they are my pick for SUV of the year. And then we've got a Corvette of every flavor for you right here, whether it be of the naturally aspirated uh, V8 variety, or you can go to the flat plane crank naturally aspirated V8, the most powerful <laughs> naturally aspirated V8 in a production vehicle in the Z06. Or you can go equally as powerful, kind of blending the two. We've got the bodywork of the Z06, the V8 of the normal Corvette, so to speak, and an electric hybrid powertrain powering the front wheels and not connected to the back wheels whatsoever. This is the first hybrid Corvette. It's the first all-wheel drive Corvette. And in certain modes, it's the first front wheel drive Corvette, which would make it the first electric Corvette because you can drive this in stealth mode with that electric motor powering the front wheels only. The engine stays off again for stealth. And uh, yeah, so there you go. You have E-Ray and then Z06 and your standard Corvette. A Corvette of every flavor. We do have a Tahoe over there, but Chevy has told us that the Tahoe is getting an update for 2025. So all these Tahoes and Suburbans are just a little bit outdated. Midside sedans are not dead. The Malibu still soldiers on. Not too much is changing with that. Uh, it is a handsome vehicle, but it is in a segment that not a lot of people are shopping. I really love uh, the look of this Colorado ZR2. This is one of the most capable midsize pickup trucks on the market. They do offer an even more outrageous version of this pickup truck, partnering with AEV American Expedition Vehicles to make a Bison version that is even more insane than this. It takes the ZR2 and builds upon it. So you still get all those DSSV Multimatic shocks and all that goodie, all the goodies that come with the ZR2 package, but then you get boron stamped steel skid plates and protection, uh, taller wheels and tires and all that good stuff. We get the Trail Boss, we had one for a week. We actually surprisingly loved it at 41-ish thousand dollars. It, it was a good value uh, proposition in the midsize segment for all the stuff that you get, especially the off-road goodies. This is the Z71 trim. This is one that I would be interested in myself, and it does look like we found uh, the Trax 2RS window sticker. So you can see the Trax starts, uh, 2RS starts at 25,000, and the one that we saw up there, yep, 25,000. No options, no prices, so there you go. 
We get that chassis cab from uh, the window sticker on the Active and a few uh, heavy duty Silverado's back here. The new 2024 design. Uh, this was a really big success for me here on the channel covering this at this exact show last year. So uh, you let me know what are your thoughts now that these have been out on the road for a year, what are your thoughts on this new 2024 design? Especially here in this midnight edition, high country, everything that is normally chromed is blacked out, looks really good. This is the one that I'm excited about right here. This is the 2500 HD ZR2, perhaps the most off-road capable heavy duty pickup truck outside of the uh, Ram Power Wagon because that thing's got solid front and rear axles, uh, disconnecting sway bars. It's basically a huge giant Jeep, but this thing, independent front suspension, those DSSV Multimatic shocks, tons of capability and performance, and you can get the Duramax diesel in it, which you cannot do, and some other off-road heavy duties. Then we've got some 1500s over here, uh, Z71, Trail Boss, we've got High Country, and the new Chevy Traverse. So very cool to see this just out in the open on the show floor. We're getting very close to the launch of this. So very excited to see this uh, hit dealer showroom floors because this is the 2025 version and we're gonna come over here and show you the outgoing version major differences here between these two vehicles. You can see this one very much looks like a Chevy crossover, whereas this looks much more like, well, a uh, Chevy uh, Tahoe that we saw earlier. Really has this big, rugged, boxy off-road look to it. First ever Z71 trim on the tra uh, Traverse. So very excited, very capable vehicle here, but still waiting to learn a little bit more about what it's actually like getting behind the wheel. Gone is the V6 of this model right here. This had the 3.6 V6. This has got a two liter turbocharged, uh, uh, not a two liter, 2.5 liter uh, four cylinder. And so very excited to see that. The power numbers are up. The fuel economy should be up. So very interested to see exactly what this pans out to be like uh, when we start getting them on the road and testing them out. Uh, but very different look here from what it replaces. We'll go ahead and do a, a pan down the side of both. You can see just how big, boxy, and rugged uh, this new 2025 Traverse looks over the one that it replaces. I, I, I like the look. What about you? Sound off in the comments. We've got all the new lighting looks of the brand very cool very again rugged interesting and unlike what it replaces over here we've got the silverado ev we just spent a week again in the competition from ford in the f-150 lightning unlike ford chevy didn't just rip out all the uh, internal combustion guts of their normal gas-powered silverado to make this they built it from the ground up on the new ultium platform so you can see we've got that ZR2 AEV Bison back there in white. That is what a traditional Silverado looks like, but this is a ground up brand new vehicle. We've, uh, this being the RST trim in black is what you are gonna see start hitting the roads very soon. 24 inch wheels, tons of power. You do have a front trunk. It's popped open, but can't really get into it. We'll peek in here to the interior. Huge screen like in the Blazer EV. Uh, lots of cool tech in here. Very roomy in the back seat. This back seat actually folds down because like the Chevy Avalanche from days past, you can actually remove the back window and uh, pass through from the bed into the cab. So you can see we've got a mid gate, but they did it one better over the Avalanche. It's actually a 60-40 split mid gate. So they've learned over the years. So in theory, I guess you could have someone right in the back and still have long items pass through, even though this is a longer bed than what you get in a normal Silverado. So lots of storage. I believe it's up to 11 feet uh, from nose to tail of storage here in this Silverado EV. Another EV uh, to talk about that is, again, out in the open is the Equinox EV. 
This is the RS trim. We really don't know much about this other than the fact that pricing is going to start around $35,000. Uh, originally it was supposed to start at $30,000, um, but it sounds like uh, we're going to get a little bit more expensive versions. And just like with that Silverado EV, we're going to start with the RS trims, the more expensive trims, uh, and then they're going to trickle their way down. But you can see this is what the EV version looks like. That is what the current 2024 gas version looks like. Though while we were in Chicago, we were able to check out the new 2025. That looks very much like a shrunken down traverse like we saw earlier. So while this is going the EV route and looks very aerodynamic and car-like, the 2025 gas-powered version is definitely going more rugged and SUV-like. So let me know down in the comments what do you think here of the Equinox RS EV I don't know what combination of letters uh, we need to do there, but now we're going to go ahead and pan over here towards Toyota. We're actually going to start back in the corner and work our way across just so we don't miss anything. This is the fun section over here. This is the Gazoo Racing, the GR section of the booth. We've got the GR86, the GR Supra, and the GR Corolla. These are the fun ones. These are the ones uh, that show that Toyota is invested in performance vehicles. Uh, this one you can get for around $30,000 and is a blast to drive. The GR Corolla you could get for around 35. dollars Fit the whole family in. We actually fit our whole family plus one uh, in a GR Corolla for a weekend getaway here to Dallas. So very practical, fun, all wheel drive, manual transmission vehicle. And I enjoyed it very much. And then you've got the GR Supra. Let's see if this one actually has a manual transmission. It does, which is a new addition. Unfortunately, uh, from the looks of it, interest in the Supra is down. Sales for 2023 were down like 50% over 2022, even though they added the manual transmission for the 2023 model year. So what's wrong with you guys? This car is excellent. I have enjoyed it every time I've driven it. Go out, test drive one now. Like they're good. Coming around here, we've got a TRD Camry. This is the old outgoing version of the Camry. We'll show you the new one here in just a moment. And then we've got Corolla, another Camry, the Crown. We really like that. Have tested one of those. Another Corolla. We've got Prius and BRZ over here, uh, which are their hybrid and fully electric offerings currently. Uh, this is the hybrid, uh, the name of the game in hybrid technology. Uh, we drove one of these. We drove the Prime plug-in hybrid version, which I do believe is what this one is and uh, thoroughly enjoyed it. Still trying to get one for a full week of testing to see what it's like to live with. This is the BZ4X, fully electric, first fully electric from Toyota on a shared platform with both Lexus, which is not unusual, which we have tested for a full week, and Subaru, a brand they partnered with uh, to make this vehicle in the Subaru Solterra. Over here, we've got the Venza. This vehicle's replacement has already been announced. It's going to be a tall wagon of version of the Crown called the Crown Signia. So may the uh, Venza rest in peace for the second time. Then we've got some RAV4s, a Corolla Cross, another RAV4, the traditional Highlander, which is not going away, is more of their short trip, three row SUV as they define it. We've got a silver one over there, but then we've got their new uh, big boy. This is the Grand Highlander with more room inside than their full body on frame. Sequoia full size and we've had one of these on the channel we've had multiple of these on the channel and we really liked them I in fact liked it better than the Lexus version of the same vehicle the Lexus TX is based on this platform the Grand Highlander just makes more sense to me uh, it, it is definitely more appealing you can see we've got two different flavors here uh, this is the trim we most recently tested in the Limited. It's the one you're probably going to see on the road more. You can see very nice uh, interior on this one, a very big screen, and a little bit of fake wood accents, which is something I felt was lacking from the Lexus. Over here is the Platinum Grade, 
and a, a slightly different look. We've got a little bit of gold bronze accenting here on the inside, leather, suede, all that fun stuff. All right, so I showed you the current Camry. This is the new Camry for 2025. We have an entire tour of one from the LA Auto Show last fall. And uh, I've seen this one, but we covered a blue XLE. This looks like an SXSE. I'll get the words out with the red interior. Looks pretty sharp. I especially like the dual tone uh, roof, but very much looks like the new Prius and some of the new Crown models. It is a very updated look for Toyota as a brand. The interior is nice and updated as well. But yeah, this headlight treatment very much looks like the Prius, which isn't a bad thing. Never in a million years would I thought, think that I would say something like, it looks like a Prius and that's good, but that's what you get here. Coming across, this is the new Toyota Land Cruiser. We checked out one of these while in Chicago. It was the base model. This is not the base model. You can tell them apart by the headlight treatment. That one was the uh, 1958 edition. This is either the launch edition, which is a one year only, or the 19, or the uh, Land Cruiser, just the Land Cruiser, Land Cruiser, uh, but you can see LED lights up front. They did just announce starting price of the Land Cruiser at 55,000 and some change. That is gonna be for the base one, like what we saw in Chicago, full video deep dive of that with Holly, checking out some of our favorite things, both inside and out. The powertrain in this is the uh, iForce Max four-cylinder. So it's a turbocharged four-cylinder hybrid, same one that is used in the top trims of the new Tacoma that are not out yet. So yes, neither is this. We're still waiting on final details of that engine to be worked out. But coming over here, you can see we've got a TRD Sport and a TRD off-road version of said new Tacoma. Both of these are actually running the, uh, the smaller or the non-hybrid engine. There, I'll get the words out here in just a moment. Uh, we recently drove a TRD off-road version and I just had a conversation with someone that was talking about this looking fake. Uh, underneath the hood, there are some openings. Uh, I can't tell if the plumbing actually runs through. They should have a product specialist here later today when the show uh, gets closer to opening. I'm here, it's not even seven o'clock yet, folks. So I am here very early covering this show before employees even get here, uh, just so you can see it without a bunch of clutter, without a bunch of mess. So yes, um, that's what we've got here. You can see this one has got the big chin uh, air dam up front. This one has it removed. So this shows you exactly uh, what it would look like if you took off that big chin up front. Definitely a good approach angle now. Very clear opening to those wheels. You can see skid plates and such underneath. And coming inside, fairly basic interior. We get the smaller screen, not that big 14 inch screen, but it looks like a baby Tundra on the inside. And like I said, this one is the TRD off-road. Over here is TRD Sport. So those are the uh, two Tacoma offerings, which like I said, look like a baby Tundra. Here is that new Tundra. We've had one on the channel. We really liked it, uh, but I've got to come back to this one and talk about this one. This is the new color for TRD Pro vehicles this year. This one is called Terra. This is the TRD Pro version. And yes, as you can see, it did win our Texas Auto Riders Truck of Texas for 2024. Uh, very well earned. We had a lot of fun with this one. It'll be This October, when we're testing vehicles again, could be that uh, maybe a mid-sized pickup truck uh, wins that award moving forward. We'll see. There's a lot of competition in that mid-sized segment. Here's that Sequoia I referenced earlier when we were talking about the Grand Highlander. This one is interesting to me. It, it's built on the Tundra platform, so you know it's capable. This is a TRD Pro version, so you get all the same goodies from the TRD version of the Tundra. But where this one falls short for me is being a good three-row SUV body on frame, 
We've got something like 11, 11 cubic feet of space back here behind the third row. They have done some unique and interesting things like you can pull the back seat forward and backwards, but underneath this back seat is where the hybrid battery resides because all Sequoias are hybrids with that iForce Max. That battery's got to go somewhere in the Tundra that's so under the back seats, completely getting rid of underfloor storage. Here it's under the third row seats which does cut into its three row functionality. I don't know, it just seems like a little bit of a miss for me. And then one of the last ones to come in Terra for 2024 is the 2024 Forerunner. With the Land Cruiser in the lineup now, this is a very interesting vehicle for me. Uh, should be getting a 2025 update. It is a little bit smaller than the Land Cruiser and should come in cheaper than the Land Cruiser. You can see this one starts at 40705 It's probably not for this TRD Pro version. I'll go ahead and come in and yeah, 57834 But you can see for a loaded one, yes, it does come in right around the starting price of the Land Cruiser. So different vehicles for different missions. Very interested to see what Toyota does there. Panning around from Toyota, we've got Subaru, we've got WRX. Uh, this vehicle may look familiar from the GR section of Toyota. This is another vehicle they built in partnership with one another. This is the BRZ. Same engine, same platform, same, 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 same. Very good, very fun vehicle. Can get it for around 30K. We just spent a week in one of these. This is the Subaru Ascent three-row uh, SUV crossover, however you want to define it. Does have a four-cylinder under the hood, which is the going trend in big three-row SUVs. But uh, we really enjoyed our time in it. This is the Onyx edition, just like the one we had. So you get all this uh, lime green accent stitching, the 11.6 inch um, Starlink infotainment. I'll remember the names here in just a moment. And then all the black accents on the outside for the Onyx edition. We do not yet have a Wilderness edition that is potentially coming soon. Speaking of Wilderness edition, we've got Crosstrek, we've got Outgoing Forester. This is what the Forester currently looks like in uh, Wilderness trim. Keep this in mind as uh, we move to the front of the booth here in just a moment. And the OG Wilderness model, the Outback. I do believe this is the next vehicle in the Subaru lineup to be revamped and made all new. We're well past a mid-cycle refresh. I think this one is the next one. You can expect getting a full redo. And these two right here were the last. This is the Crosstrek and back behind it. It's not the um, WRX, uh, but it is the Impreza hatch. The Impreza is what spawned the WRX, which is now its own model. Another vehicle that'll look very familiar to you from Toyota is this. This is the Solterra, all electric. It's their first all electric vehicle. Again, built in conjunction with Toyota. Shares a lot of the same stuff with that Toyota BZ4X, including exterior styling. Coming over here, remember me saying, remember the Forester? Well, this is the 2025 version of that Forester. And the first time I'm seeing it here in Texas, so if you want to see what the new Forester looks like for yourself, definitely make it out here this weekend to the North Texas Auto Expo. Uh, I like it. It's fun and interesting. It is definitely a design departure for the brand. They went a little more mainstream with the styling of it, but they didn't lose some of the things that make a Forester a Forester. That being the big window box, as I call it, the very tall greenhouse. Uh, very good visibility from the inside. I'm hearing a lot of conversations that the back end looks like a Mitsubishi. I can't exactly disagree with that. This is the sport model. So we get all these bronze accents, which is an interesting look because I thought bronze uh, or copper was really the color for wilderness. This is darker than what is offered on the wilderness. So there is that. Uh, Holly and I checked out one of these in Chicago with a much different interior. And this one being the sport, we've got cloth and uh, synthetic leather. The one that we saw in Chicago was, I believe, a touring model. So it had leather and suede on the inside and looked very nice, very sharp. But 
Uh, we were also in LA when they debuted this vehicle. I've got a lot of coverage here on the channel about the new Forester. Coming around, can't come to Subaru without talking about puppies. Again, I am here very early. We just passed seven o'clock in the morning. The show opens in about three hours. So people are still arriving, but you can definitely come pet some puppies while you're at Subaru. Like, have you even been to a car show if you haven't petted the puppies at Subaru? Now, I promised some surprises at this auto show. This entire section was an entire surprise to me. If you've been paying attention to auto shows and to my coverage of the Chicago Auto Show, Stellantis, parent company of Chrysler, Dodge, Jeep, Ram, was not there. What would have been the 20th anniversary of Camp Jeep, which started at the Chicago Auto Show, well, the, the entire parent company just pulled out. They were not there in any capacity other than, I believe, ride and drives outside. Uh, it was a strategic decision by company leadership and they won't say it, but I'll go ahead and say it. I am 99% certain because of the UAW strikes, Stellantis did take a big hit and they are quite possibly refocusing some of their uh, finances in other ways. And unfortunately for us as consumers, that means they aren't officially in auto shows anywhere in the country on an official capacity but they're here at North Texas. So if you wanna check out some Stellantis products without uh, the hassle of a salesman, come to the North Texas Auto Show. You can see we've got the Jeep Grand Cherokee L, the normal Jeep Grand Cherokee, the now deceased Chrysler 300, may she rest in peace. And the uh, Jeep Wrangler, this is a four by E. You can tell by those blue tow hooks up there. We've got the new grill up front. Uh, that they debuted on 2023s that is new for 2024. We spent a week with this type of Grand Cherokee. This is the 4xE Trailhawk. Go watch that video. Uh, I did not love it as much as I thought I would, but who knows, I could be wrong. I really love this color right here. This is Earl, meet Earl. This is a Sahara trim uh, with that 3.6 V6 under the hood. But yes, this is one of the new colors, uh, and I think it looks really sharp. We've got some gladiators here. We've got the Willys version here. We've got the Compass. Typical Stellantis things here, nothing too spectacular. We've got the Ram TRX. <sighs> About the Ram TRX. Officially ending production. Uh, we are losing the Hellcat V8 under the hood which is very sad. They never really called it the Hellcat V8 and the TRX because it's its own thing, but 6.2 liter supercharged Hemi. So much fun. Pad one on the channel. They are not replacing it when the entire Ram lineup gets an update for 2025. There's a lot of information out on the new 2025s. We've got a Rebel uh, that will be continuing on, but look for that high output twin turbo Hurricane inline six from the Grand Wagoneer and Wagoneer. Uh, we tested one earlier this year. We liked the powertrain, but I'm gonna miss that crazy raucous Hellcat powered one. Speaking of which, this is probably your last opportunity to get that engine and the Durango. Um, so get a Durango Hellcat if you really like that powertrain. We had one again, really liked it. Here is the first new Dodge vehicle in over a decade. This is the Hornet. Uh, we had one. It's got a fun four cylinder under the hood. You can get a plug in hybrid variant. It is a strong competitor, I think, and perhaps the only real competitor for a fun driving crossover uh, to the Mazda CX-5. Uh, Mazda CX-5 has that zoom zoom DNA. This has got the DNA of the Dodge brothers who brought us crazy things like this Charger SRT Hellcat. Again, this vehicle has since ended production. Uh, you, if you really want one, you're gonna have to find one on a used lot or maybe an unsold 2023, but production has officially ended. May she rest in peace. All right, Stellantis in the books. We're gonna start over here 
at the corner of Ford and Chevrolet and work our way back across Ford. Talk about some of the things that they brought to the show. Starting with these two Bronco Sports. Surprisingly, this is a vehicle that we have not yet tested on the channel. I can't seem to get my hands on one for whatever reason. We've had many of the OG Broncos, which you can see back there in the middle, uh, but we haven't gotten this Bronco Sport. Bronco Sport is essentially a ruggedized version of the Escape platform. So there's that, um, but yeah, this is more like what the Escape used to be, a big boxy, uh, cute ute of a vehicle uh, with some off-road chops uh, set to go up against the likes of that Jeep Compass uh, from the Jeep booth. That's really the size and uh, offerings of the uh, baby Bronco, so to speak. Inside, it's kind of like the Maverick. Not a whole lot to it, but that's okay. It's a fun little vehicle. Let's see if this one's actually open. It is. A little tight on the back seat. It is, I do believe, in the subcompact class. So we drive a Cherokee Trailhawk daily. This is smaller than a Cherokee Trailhawk. Uh, more big Broncos over here. Back here is the Escape. It got a new face for 2023, I do believe. Uh, this is the new face. We should have one showing up uh, in our garage here in just about a week. So we'll give a report back on that. But small little crossover from Ford. This is their midsize offering in the Edge. You can see we've got a couple of them. And right there, we've got the outgoing Ford Explorer. And I say outgoing because right here we have the 2025 in the big blue box. We've got the new uh, 2025 Ford Explorer. We did a little bit of a deep dive on this vehicle from Chicago, but uh, simplification is really the story here. No more King Ranch version, uh, no more uh, was it Timberline version. You get four different trims, ST line, ST, Platinum, and what's the other one, Active, something like that. So uh, simplifying the engine offerings as well, you get two different versions of um, turbocharged power under the hood should be a good seller for them. It has traditionally been a very good seller for them. Yes, active. So this is the one trim I couldn't remember right here in front of me. Uh, this one is all wheel drive version. You can see the updated tail lamps, <coughs> excuse me, kind of that Doppler pattern. So this is what they will look like for 2025. And this is what the, it is replacing. It is a mid cycle refresh. So it's kind of a nip tuck on the inside and on the outside that bigger grill. I like that they have fixed this. We're gonna go ahead and peek in here. This is the infotainment of the outgoing models for 2024. Very much looks like a stuck on a tablet. I can't climb up on this display, but I'll see if I can peek in here. We have a horizontally uh, aligned screen here. It looks much better, more cohesive. And it is uh, the first vehicle running a non-sync branded infotainment. So it's unique uh, to this vehicle. Should signal something new to come for Ford. It'll probably trickle its way down to other vehicles. Back here, we've got the new Expedition. Uh, we've got the Platinum trim. We've got the King Ranch. You can tell them apart from the new headlights. I believe they were updated for 2023. This one still carries on with the Timberline Edition that was started by Explorer. So it's really weird that Explorer has already dropped that, but maybe that's just for the launch of the 2025s. Maybe we'll get it a little bit down the road. There's Hank the Robot, currently powered down next show in 222 minutes. Uh, we just got out of one of these in this trim. This is a Lariat version of the F-150 Lightning. Nothing is really changing for the Lightning for 2024, though the gas-powered versions of the F-150 are changing. And I'll go ahead and show you the two different, or the differences between the two. So this is a 2023 F-150 trimmer. You can see C-channel headlights that go down into the bumper around the fog lights. Just fairly solid look, nothing too spectacular. Uh, keeping in line with Ford F-150 styling. 
Here is the 2024 version. Should be hitting dealer lots soon, now already, not quite sure. But all versions get new grills, new lighting signature. I really like the amber light that kind of mimics the uh, orange gold bar here in the middle. But in this shot, you can see the differences between the two. Uh, very different look between the two up front. We do get this new high contrast Ford oval. Can't really call it the blue oval because it's black and white, uh, but it really does stand out versus the chrome and blue on the outgoing model. Otherwise, it's fairly a fair amount of nip tuck work uh, here for the 2024 version. New tail lights, uh, all digital uh, instrument cluster for all models in 2024. That's something that the Lightning al always had. So nothing too spectacular there. They are introducing a new tailgate with a door in the tailgate, not shown here on this trimmer, but we do have some videos on the channel covering that. So if you are interested in all the updates to the 2024 uh, F-150, I would say go check out the red, I believe it's a Lariat trim we saw in Chicago. Can't walk through Ford without talking about Maverick and Ranger. They're two smaller pickup truck offerings. So this is the Maverick. It is built on the same platform as the uh, Baby Bronco that we saw earlier. We've had a couple on the channel. We really loved the trimmer version because you could actually step the tail out of what is essentially a front wheel drive crossover made into a pickup truck. But then we have the Ranger, the new Ranger for 2024, new updated styling up front, new, 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 new. Uh, it seems like the entire midsize pickup truck segment is new for 2023 or 2024. We've got the new Taco, uh, Chevy and GMC updated their versions of midsize pickup trucks for 2023. Nissan updated the Frontier for 2022. Lots of new in the midsize pickup truck segment it is getting a very competitive, this one wins my vote for best interior. I like the design. It seems to work very well in here. You get dual glove boxes up there, full digital gauge cluster here in this Lariat trim. And then it does have the best, most comfortable back seat in the business. My only complaint about the back seat, you do get underfloor storage, which you can lift it up but it is a 100% bench seat. So if you've got a child seat in place, like we would uh, with Tucker in our family, you can't get to the underfloor storage. So that is a little bit of a miss for me. It was a little unfortunate. Another thing Ford is introducing here, this is optional. Uh, so check when you're ordering one or shopping for one, you get a bedside step. So Chevy has been putting steps in their bumpers, in the corner of the bumper. Ford did, did one better, at least they think so, by giving you a double wide step. You can put both feet up here uh, and climb up into the bed. It is a reinforced step, so it can support your full weight and allows you to get into the back of the bed, which as far as mid-sized pickup trucks go, it is a little on the taller side. It's not like the Nissan Frontier. Perhaps we'll look at that when we get around there. Very easy to reach in uh, and get to, but not quite uh, what I saw when we had a Frontier. You can see this one actually gets a gas strut uh, to help with uh, lowering and raising. This one's got a spray and bed liner. This one's got some power back here. So we've got a lot of options and stealing a cue from F-150. You've got a couple places here to put some clamps if you're gonna do some woodworking. And a little bit better measurement system back here on uh, the top of the uh, tailgate uh, than what is in the F-150 because these are much smaller tick marks and would be more usable. Still, I don't think good enough to actually do work if you needed to do work back in the back, but the option is there. Here we've got a platinum version of the Lightning. Again, nothing's really changing for it for 2024, 2023 F-150s all the way around. So yeah, and then we've got some Super Duties back here. Those were updated for 2023. New look, we've got the coverage on these from Houston, from uh, State Fair. We've got a lot of coverage on these. Uh, this one is the Sport Trim. Look at those wheels. I think those look better than what we saw on the trimmer at the Houston Auto Show. Let me know in the comments 
if you watch that video. Um, and then these, these look really cool too. I like this design, kind of a circle uh, spoke design. Looks really cool on this black on black on black one. That's not gonna lie. I kind of like that. Kind of goes with my theme today. Lots of black. Okay. Anyone who has followed me for any length of time knows that my favorite car is a Chevy Camaro. May she rest in peace for the second time. Yes, the Camaro has been discontinued now two times uh, back in 2002 and now again 2024. But her memory does live on and you can see many different examples here at the North Texas Auto Expo, including my favorite year, 1969. Though I could almost say I would take any one of these uh, without any hesitation. This one is modded a little not to my taste, but uh, I did have for one year a 45th anniversary 2012 Camaro SS. I loved it. I miss it. Um, <coughs> it was an emotional purchase for me, but uh, yeah. Uh, over here, we've got the Z01 convertible. Very interesting artwork attached to it. Don't know that I would have done that, but I do love the uh, Easter egg of a personalized plate with the Panther, very much like that. And then this one, the Z28, did not think I would see this one. Uh, very special version of the Camaro in the lineup. Uh, it was just a monster of a vehicle. So you can see multiple different generations, body styles. We've got this IROC Z here. Not gonna lie, the older I get, the more I kind of like this generation. I really wanted a 91 as my first car. I did end up with a V8 powered General Motors produced uh, 1991 model car as my first car, but it wasn't a Camaro Z28 or IROC Z. Um, so yeah, there's that. This one's a 68. I know that because I just know that. Really love Camaros. Next to Camaro booth, we have Kia. And we are actually driving a version of this vehicle right here. And this is the new all electric three row, most affordable electric three row on the market. This is the EV9. This is the land all wheel drive. This is essentially what I am driving, what I drove here to the show. Though we have the matte silver ivory paint job. This is the matte blue paint job which I thought they only had gloss blue. So when you watch our GT premium review of said uh, vehicle that I drove here to the show, um, disregard that. Maybe I'll make them edit it out, who knows. But you can see very cool, very unique styling all the way around. This is their star map lighting, looks very cool. This is the EV6. Uh, this is uh, the GT line, this is um, the uh, I do believe rear wheel drive version because the wheels are different, but these are the two big new EVs from Kia. Right here, we've got the updated 2024 Sorento X Pro SX Prestige with the 2.5 liter turbo four. Should be a fun vehicle. Updated styling. I don't know. I, I feel like I like the styling of the outgoing Sorento a little bit better than the updated styling. Um, We've got another version right over here, but I can't show you what they used to look like because of course they're showing off what is new and current. Um, but sound off in the comments below if you know or liked the old Sorento or like this new one, but you can see they are stealing styling elements from that EV9 with this star map lighting. The reason they call it that is they're based on unnamed constellations. They've even reworked the taillights to have that same look, that star map look uh, back here in the back. So very interesting, uh, very kind of geometric, angular look to them. But uh, the new Carnival was unveiled at the Chicago Auto Show. We got to check it out has very similar styling to the Sorento, uh, which we'll talk about here in just a moment. Uh, new Sportage or same Sportage, 
uh, Telluride or Celluride, depending on how you call it. And we've got the GT line version of the EV9 back there. So they're calling the EV9 the electric Telluride. Here you can see them side by side. Telluride, EV9. They're the same size-ish. Uh, the EV9 has got a little bit better interior packaging, I would say, for the first two rows. I don't know, I, I just kind of feel like the third row is still slightly cramped back here and it is a two person third row. So six seater vehicle, which you can also get the Telluride as a six seater, two plus two plus two. But uh, yeah, this is the electric Telluride, if you will. Similar size, similar profile, but that's about it. Um, I, I will say I, I am liking my time in the EV9. I did a whole story on Instagram that I will probably save uh, about my journey here in an EV. All right, we're talking Sorrento. Then we were talking new Carnival. This is what the Carnival currently looks like. The styling of it, it is about to look almost exactly like that Sorrento that we just saw. The styling is going to change to very clearly mimic uh, that Sorrento. And uh, I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. This has always looked very un-minivan-like. It is very um, boxy and SUV-like from the profile, very boxy and SUV-like from the back. I think the back is where I am not in love with the newest one as much as I am this one. Uh, I don't know, it just has a unique look to it, but the interior of the new one we get updated uh, dual screen digital cages and a lot of fun tech a lot of fun colors holly and i checked out one of these at the chicago auto show in the new 2025 trim gotta get the years right oh but you can go check that out i do want to come over here before we leave this section and talk about fleet vehicles uh, because this is the chevy silverado ev work truck this is the only one that is actually in I, I guess you could say consumers hands right now because this is the only one you can actually buy in any way shape or form slightly different than that gloss black one that we saw uh, across the way in the rst a little more basic but still a fairly nice look it looks a little more traditional truckish with that matte gray grill I'll come around here. I do believe the mid gate is not uh, featured here. Yep, we have a solid bulkhead, uh, so you don't get that mid gate functionality and smaller screens on the inside. So you don't get those crazy big screens. Let's see, is it open? Yep, it's open. A little more plain Jane interior because it is a work truck, all injection molded plastic, center console right there, some vinyl seats. Decent looking, uh, nothing crazy on the inside, but a traditional, like I said, work truck. That is what it's supposed to be. We do have a window sticker on this one, so go ahead and check it out. Yep, this label is affixed for shipping purposes only, so we have no price or anything on that. But you can see an estimated 450 miles of range, which absolutely crushes the Ford F-150 Lightning. We just had one with a 320 mile range. That is the big game changer there. This is running the new Ultium platform. I've got to talk about this. This first one I've seen. Uh, this is a sub brand of General Motors or a new brand of General Motors called Bright Drop. It is running all EV architecture. It is 100% electric. And this is the delivery vehicle of the future. You're going to see FedEx using these. They've signed a big uh, contract with General Motors and Bright Drop, uh, but running on the Ultium platform, you can see, uh, looks just like the window sticker we saw over there. Uh, all the options and stuff. It is a fleet vehicle, so we don't get a price tag on this one, but I did want to call this one out because this is a new venture for General Motors. And I think EVs make a lot of sense for commercial vehicles. Uh, that are staying in a central market, uh, that aren't doing long distance travel. So I think this is a really good plan for General Motors. Very curious, is it open? I'm gonna see. Can I open it? Oh, I can, okay. So we've got a cloth seat here, we've got a jump seat over there. Typical GM controls, all the same screens, 
uh, from the other, uh, the work truck version of the Silverado. You can see window controls and all that right here. Uh, I like the orange seat belts. That's a nice touch, but very cool that this one's actually open. Let's see if the back is actually open. Uh, so this is set to compete with a new Rivian van uh, that Amazon is using. It looks very similar to that. Oh, okay. Can, can I open it? Maybe? No, no. The back is not open. Unlike the Rivian, we don't get that big wraparound taillight situation, uh, but you do get LED lights back here. Simple work truck. There isn't a whole lot to it, so can't really talk about it too much. But yes, the batteries reside underneath the vehicle. Uh, again, this makes perfect sense to me in my eyes. As we leave Kia and the work truck section, we have Honda. Honda's here with their collection of vehicles. We've got the new Accord Civic. We've got Pilot Trail Sport or, uh, yeah, uh, Passport Trail Sport Ridgeline, CRV, HRV. But I am working my way back to this, the new Prologue. So this is built in conjunction with General Motors. This is Honda's Chevy Blazer EV. This is built on the same platform, uses all the same technology. I checked out one of these, uh, both inside and out, uh, while at the LA Auto Show last fall. As we come around here and peek inside, General Motors switch gear, steering wheel, controls, everything, because this is built right alongside the uh, Blazer EV. Unsure if uh, Honda is putting a stop sale on these. I know Chevy has a stop sale on the Blazer. They're having minor hiccups uh, with the rollout, but I really like the futuristic look of this Honda. You can see uh, we've got a very different look to the Honda badge on the back, this e-badge for electric. While this is their first electric and they did agree to partner with General Motors, I do believe this is it. This is a one and done for that partnership because they've already mentioned they are going a different way for their electric vehicles moving forward. So if you like it, cool. If you don't, cool. <laughs> no skin off my nose, no skin off their nose, uh, but it is their first attempt at an electric vehicle. Yep, uh, Pilot, CRV, all that over here. But we're going to move now into Nissan, the Nissan booth. We've got the Titan, may she rest in peace. So many discontinued vehicles here. It, it is slightly sad from the Camaro to the Charger to the 300. And of course the Titan, you can still get these on dealer lots, but this vehicle is sadly going away. We've got Ultima, we've got Sentra, we've got Frontier with this uh, Nismo off-road tent back in the back. I really like this setup right here. Like I said earlier, this one was updated for the 2022 model year. We spent a week in one. We really liked it. We think that uh, this is the best value in the midsize segment. Uh, I do believe you can get these under sticker without much of a problem. But the downside for me was the back seat. Very upright seating position back here. And installing Tucker's child safety seat was not easy. I wasn't a huge fan of that process. But uh, this is essentially the truck that we drove. It is a Pro 4X. And this green color, very similar to what we see here. We liked it fair enough. Uh, I do like all the lava orange stitching in this one. So did Tucker. And this is their off-road version of their three-row Pathfinder. It is the Rock Creek. I believe it gets 5 8 inch lift over non-Rock Creek additions. And you can actually run premium fuel in this one, get a little more power out of it. So it's a fun offering from the brand. I feel like uh, the interior appointments maybe are lacking just a little bit for the price point. Uh, you get leather uh, seating with cloth here in the middle. Otherwise, I liked it fair enough. We've got Nissan Kicks, Nissan Z, and then we've got the Nissan Aria. This is their first EV. We've driven one of these uh, last spring, I do believe it was, uh, and enjoyed it. It's got some fun features on the inside. Very cool, interesting, unique look. 
Um, I like it. We saw one in uh, Chicago that traveled from the North Pole to the South Pole. It was lifted on 39 inch tall BF Goodrich KO2 tires. It was ridiculous. They said that that actually did not impact range all that much, putting those big tall tires. Uh, it was a husband and wife duo. They just wanted to show what EVs are capable of and beat some of that stigma. Kind of like what I did uh, covering my journey here uh, in an EV. The last of the three EVs from a Toyota and Subaru is this Lexus. This is the RZ. Uh, we tested one in this color, but it had a different interior. I liked the interior of ours a little bit better. It has this suede interior, but we had a baby blue suede. I do like that it's caramel. It gives a, a nice contrast, but uh, I would have a different exterior on this one. I'm going to have the caramel interior because I liked the matching blue on blue that we had. Uh, a lot of fun vehicles here from Lexus, but the one that I am most interested in is back in the back. This is the new RX. We've got a couple samples of that. And we've got an ES, an LS, an LC. You know I love the Lexus LC. It is just absolutely beautiful. We've got the LX, which we've sampled off-road. The TX, which, uh, as I mentioned when we were at Toyota, is their version of the Grand Highlander. And then the GX. This is their version of the Land Cruiser, though this gets the twin turbo V6 from the Tundra. So same body, same wheelbase, same, same, but this gets more power and more cylinders from a twin turbo V6. I do a deep dive from the Houston Auto Show uh, on this. It is a three row vehicle. Let's see, does it open? They've got the power on but they've probably got it locked for the show. You can see prototype. Uh, these should be hitting show floor soon, but very similar interior uh, to, uh, let's see, maybe, maybe. No, it's, it's locked down essentially, but um, yeah, very cool, very interesting. If you wanna see more about it, go check out our video from the Houston Auto Show uh, where I cover that a little bit more in detail. And over here, I really like, I've determined my favorite Lexuses are the rear drive Lexuses. So that encompasses this in the IS, the LC over there, the GX, the LX, and I haven't tested it yet, but all the way over there in white, the LS, the big uh, executive luxury sedan. Last place we are going to go is the Sewell booth. They are a brand of dealerships here in North Texas. You can see they are focusing on premium brands. They have Buick, they have GMC, and with GMC, you get GMC's sub-brand, and that is Hummer EV. They brought two examples for us here at the show. The truck, which was the first to be introduced. Speaking of our uh, second channel, GT Premium Reviews, Eric and I actually drove one of these. It, it was a gas, <laughs> which I do realize is a fun way to ex uh, explain an EV experience, but it was unlike anything that I've driven to date. Uh, very interesting from the uh, extreme four-wheel steering, the crab mode, the uh, extract mode with 11 plus inches of ground clearance or 13 plus inches of ground clearance. This thing is nuts. And they are now offering an SUV version of it. And this is the first big SUV you can get on the Ultium platform. All the same goodies from the truck version, just in a shorter profile uh, with an SUV look to it. You can still take off all the roof panels. Let's see, are they actually open? Nope, uh, but digital screens on the inside. It's only a two row vehicle, so just something to note there. Um, it is big, <coughs> it is rugged, it is capable, uh, but it is electric. I'm gonna start my infinity discussion here with this QX60. We recently had uh, one very similar to this in the autograph. I think Infinity styling is very nice, very uh, classy, 
And that leads us into what is hiding behind this QX60. This is the QX monograph. This is an example of what the new QX80 will look like. This was shown off at the Concours de Elegance uh, last fall in California. Lots of stuff to go through on this one. This is the design direction of the brand and the first vehicle to wear the new fourth generation Infinity logo, which that is the road going off into the horizon. It is a cool 3D effect. You really have to come in and look at it in person to see that it really dips off into the horizon back there. So it is three dimensional and this is the first vehicle to wear that badge, but this is what the QX80 will look like. It is not on right now, but uh, I can tell you they've really leaned into the lighting signature on this one that they call it the piano lighting signature that goes all the way across and can move and light up like piano keys, which is a really a very interesting look. You get these uh, folded grill patterns here in the grill that give it a very distinct look. And look at that pass through right there for airflow uh, around the front corner of the vehicle. You can see from the profile of it, it does look very similar to the current QX80, but modernized. We've got big wheels and tires, flush hand, or uh, uh, yeah, flush handles. Let me get the word out. But yeah, look at these wheels very interesting pattern here on the wheels uh, yokohama tires and we'll see they are 325 45 or 24. i don't think i've ever said that combination of numbers before when referencing tires you can see the lighting signature does follow around back here to the very back where we have infinity spelled out and no infinity badge logo back here but we still get those piano key lights uh, that can do a walk-up animation or a departure animation. Very, very cool look. I know the brand is really leaning into their Japanese heritage uh, with this vehicle, and this signifies the new design direction of Infinity. So very cool. Can't show you inside. There really isn't an interior. I do see uh, through these heavily tinted windows. I mean, there is an interior, but this is strictly a show car to show off what the design of the brand will look like moving forward. And I'm here for it. Sound off in the comments what you think down below. Other brands owned by Sewell, we've got Cadillac and this, the new Ineos Grandier. So this is a new vehicle, new manufacturer, uh, all, all the way around, uh, German and British collaboration. I've got a couple of friends that just or are currently on the Alcan Rally in one of these. I uh, can't really talk off the cuff uh, about much detail on this, but I really like the look. Very rugged, very awesome, uh, boxy, rugged look. You can see these are Bridgestone Dueler tires. They aren't really off-road focused. This looks to be more something that you would um, have on-road at least in this trim, but tires are easily replaced. But you can see tons of ground clearance into this one and lots of cool uh, interior switch gear on this one. We'll have to talk to Mercedes and her husband, Andy, about their experience taking this on the Alcan Rally. Uh, I believe it was something like uh, thousands of miles. I can't remember exactly what it was. They did it uh, the last time in a Subaru Outback Wilderness. So this is very clearly a different direction for them as they do the rally. But you can see the British and German flag here uh, because it is a combination effort between the two com countries, um, <laughs> how it was built and designed. As we leave the Sewell booth, we have, as you can see here from the floor display, the last thing I want to talk about here at the North Texas Auto Expo, and that is the EV test track. So EVs, they're fun, they're useful, 
They serve a purpose. They may not work for everybody. They may not work for your use case, but for a lot of people who may not have considered them, they are worth a look. So if you are in Dallas, if you're <laughs> attending the North Texas Auto Expo, I highly recommend working your way back to the back right, up the stairs, they do have a ramp. Uh, they're very accessible here, but uh, you can come to the EV test track and ride along in many different vehicles from many different brands. As you work your way back here, you can see all the representation that we have. We have Nissan, we have Kia, we have Mercedes-Benz, or I guess officially Mercedes EQ. We've got Audi, we've got Ford, <laughs> excuse me, and we have BMW. So many, many different brands to experience back here. So did not see BMW on the show floor, but we've got some electric BMWs here. Did not see Mercedes-Benz on the show floor, uh, but we have some Mercedes EQ products here. Did not see Audi on the show floor, but we have some Audi products here. So if you're interested in some of these brands, you want to experience them, for yourself you absolutely can in the indoor ev test track i will go ahead and call out we have experienced this vehicle right here this is the q4 e-tron we did a texas road trip in it and I'll, I'll go ahead and tell you the problem with evs currently is not the vehicles themselves it's the infrastructure lets them down every time uh was kind of the experience i had getting here to this show it's just the infrastructure needs help and that is uh, where the real investment needs to go some of these brands back behind me have partnered together to launch their own ev charging network will be very interesting to see how that uh, translates and how that comes to be i do believe it's called ion na or iona not quite sure but ion north america very interested to see how that plays out, what that means for EV charging and EV road trips uh, here in the States moving forward. But that is everything I have found brand new from the show floor of the 2024 North Texas Auto Expo. If you wanna see more from us, you can find us on all social media platforms, Facebook, Instagram, X, TikTok, Threads, YouTube, everything at GT Garage Talk. Sorry, walking downstairs. I don't want to fall on camera. Uh, hit that subscribe button down below. Ring the bell so you are notified every time a new video drops. I'm going to do some deep dives here on some of the vehicles that have caught my eye, but uh, very excited to just see some new vehicles here. See some vehicles that I haven't seen at any other car show uh, yet this year or last year, especially over here at the Sewell booth between the QX monograph from Infinity and that Ineos Grenadier. So lots of fun stuff to see. Again, show is currently, as you are watching, closed to the public, but we'll be opening in about two hours. So I've got two hours uh, to do some deep dives. Again, if you want to see more from us, hit subscribe, follow us on all social media channels. Until next time, gearheads, bye.